Speaking of loneliness, I know that tonight is the first night and I know that all of you are so busy and so tired and exhausted. But I'm gonna take the hardest topic and I don't know why we picked the night to talk about psychology. <laughs> but even if we have something different, the, the two guest speakers haven't arrived yet, so are, you are stuck with me, and if I eh, try to stay awake, sure, yeah. Hi. Taban, now we know that the topic is called loneliness, and this is the outline, what are we gonna cover together? As Sayyidna mentioned, we're gonna define what is loneliness. We're gonna talk about the difference between loneliness and being alone. And we're gonna talk about you as an emerging adult, and I know that back then, three, four years ago, you guys used to attend with the younger uh, generation, but we found that from your generation, only 40 people attend 50 by max. Then we came up with the idea to just allocate the NWCYC for 18 and up, and that will serve as two things. Number one, it will help us with our insurance coverage, like the, the diocese insurance. But number two, it will also make the talks so much focused. And last year was the first time we attempted to do that. And despite COVID, and we actually have like 170 attendees. This year, I think Sayyidna is so happy to hear that you are 200 plus. So thank you all for joining. So we'll talk, we'll talk about the emerging adult, what are the challenges that you guys face, and how loneliness can affect you. We'll also have a spiritual reflection, as Sayyidna said, biblical view on loneliness. And we're gonna dive deep a little bit on the research finding. You might feel it's a little bit intense, yet it is so essential, so important to understand the severity of the problem, because honestly speaking, you spend money, time, effort, you come and sit on Friday night after a long drive or flight. If this is not important to you, why would you do that? So we'll talk about research finding just to emphasize on the dangers or the danger of loneliness and the importance of not being lonely. We'll talk about symptoms of loneliness, how to cope with loneliness, We'll speak about some activities, and tomorrow, God willing, we have a dedicated workshop just to get uh, to the point and to reflect more on practicality. Uh, obviously, I have to say this, this topic is so sensitive, so if you feel like you get triggered somehow, please ask for help, talk to any of the fathers, uh, if you find that you have any psychological issues or mental health issues, anything that might surface, don't hesitate to talk to me. We can have a small, tiny session together so that what you did to come here is to be better, healthier. You're actually going to live better and healthier, God willing. Uh, any question you have, you can ask. Obviously, these are the reference of the talk tonight. All of these are the reference for this lonely talk. The motto is a verse from Ecclesiastes, and those of you who know me, I love that book. I love the Bible, but the book of Ecclesiastes speaks to me a lot. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his follower. And the verse that scares me is, But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. The Bible is saying it is important to be not alone. The first interaction on God's reflection or God's mind in the beginning of Genesis, God said it is not good for Adam to be, to be a alone. Obviously, God put in Adam's heart to reflect around and see the animals, everybody has a companion, fellow uh, partner, except him. 
From the beginning, Adam felt there is a need for a fellowship. God created for Adam Eve, and that exactly why we are talking about this topic tonight. Uh, what is loneliness? We're going to define what is loneliness, and you're going to learn that it is totally different than being alone. If I want to just get some interaction with you guys, can anybody define for me what is lonely? What does it mean when we say, I feel lonely? Can anybody tell me what it means in his mind? Yes. What? Oh, I feel sad, right? It's a feeling. So you define it as a feeling. So I feel something, right? But what else? Can anybody give me a hint? What is lonely? Yes. Bravo, Alik. To feel lonely is actually to feel like you are not sociable or you lack what we call social interaction. What else? What is lonely? Yes. Bravo, Alik. To feel useless. To feel low, down. One of the points we're going to touch on that later, the difference between alone and lonely Alone is a state that I put myself into willingly without regretting that. Lonely is something that might be imposed on me so that despite being with people or not, I feel sad because I cannot connect. That's in short what is lonely. It's a feeling that I don't connect, I don't belong Nobody understands me. Nobody cares about my presence or absence. If you look here, I have a lot of definitions, but I actually, one of them, it says loneliness is the universal human condition that is both complex and unique to each individual. So your feeling of lonely could be different than mine. I'm going to give you some synonyms, and I want you to tell me if you can relate to one of these. One of the synonym, synonym is to feel isolated, to feel alone, to feel friendless, to feel uh, forsaken, abandoned, rejected, unloved, unwanted, unpopular, sad, unhappy, uh, hurtful, dependent, lonesome. Can any one of you relate to any of these? Don't raise your hand, but can you relate to some of these? You see, this is why lonely is so important to understand and to deal with, to combat. Uh, there is a reflection paper here or page. I want one of you to tell me what is the difference between lonely and alone. Any difference? Any? Yes, go ahead, Habibi. Um, I feel, like Shaq said before, that alone is like you're alone. Bravo. And the second thing you said that alone is like the person is at peace. Bravo, Aleki. He likes to do everything, but the other one, he just doesn't know what to do, and that's why he feels lonely. Bravo, Aleki. So, did you hear what she said? In one side, being alone, you might be at peace, right? You could be taking quiet time to reflect. The most amazing example that we're going to see later on is solitude in monastic life. And our Coptic church is known to have uh, started and established monastic life. And still, monasticism is actually one of the strongest foundation of the Coptic church. If you look at Sayyidna's face, Sayyidna is originally a monk. You feel like he's happy. He's Smile will give you peace. You go to the monastery, you meet with monks, and you feel like you actually want to spend time with them. You know what? One day, St. Anthony spent like 20 years in a cave, alone. But when they opened the door, or when he opened the door to allow visitors in, 
you read so many things, but one statement that is stuck in my mind, I can never understand how, it says that the, 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 the brightness in his face was so strong. The smile in his face, he was at peace. That's the difference between alone and being a lonely. I can be alone and that's my decision. I can be happy about it. When we say no longer alone, you're going to feel and know now what we mean by that. And that's exactly what Sayyidina talked about. You have a support from heaven. You have the church support you. You are not alone. But make the decision not to be ever lonely. Right. Obviously, the comparison, as you said, alone versus loneliness, one of them is a decision. One of them is a state, an emotion. I could be in the midst of everybody, yet I feel lonely. One of them makes you happy because you reflect. The other one makes you hate your life. You guys know that in May 2023, 20, two, three months ago, uh, a doctor in the United States Army published 82 pages warning report. He called it epidemic loneliness warning because he started to talk about how post pandemic everybody is feeling lonely. And he put so many statistics to warn people. And guess what? Your generation marked very high in the score as far as feeling lonely as we're going to see with the research finding later on. You know how many when they ran a survey to ask emerging adult like your age, uh, tell us if you have a friend or have no friend. Tell us if you have close friend or marginalized friend. You know how many 18 up to 30 say that they have no close friend? or they just surrounded themselves with some social group, yet nobody of them could be called a friend? How many do you think? How many, percentage-wise, from your generation? And by the way, when we talk about your emerging adult stage of development, you are the time to connect. How many? <laughs> it was almost 30%, 27 but that's people who say a, people who say a, people who say we have no close friend. How many who said we have no friend at all? Another 27%. So total of camp, as he said, almost 60%. Bravo alayka, Habib. So let, let's talk about your age group for a few minutes so that we, we know that you are not alone. The church understands you and the church knows exactly what is your interest, how do you feel, and what we can do to make sure that we address your concern. As an emerging adult, 18 up to 29, and maybe a little bit more, you are at the age of leaving home sometimes, even if you go out to study. You are at the age of finishing education. You are at the age of finding employment, getting married, starting relationship, starting a family, redefining relationship with parents, pursuing love life, shaping a career path, developing religious belief, having hopes for the future. That's your age, that's your interest. When we look at your stage of development, actually the most important thing that you are doing now is the longing for connection. Uh, Erickson matrix of development, if you look here, you're gonna find that this is the age group that you are in. 
the biggest question is, can I be loved? Can I find love? Can I connect? And obviously the word love here is not just intimacy. It's the love of the friends, the love of the church, the love of the family. But can I be loved? Can I love? Can I connect? Uh, as an emerging adult, you are trying to, to be yourself. You are trying to be independent. You are trying to be connected. You are trying to be recognized. You are trying to be accepted and you are trying to be respected and loved. Can anybody add to the list? Can anybody relate to at least one of the lists? If you relate to one of these points, just raise your hand. I think all of us, eh, all of us do. All of us do. Type. Let us look at some research finding and let us just consider the facts. Obviously, I don't want to go deeper into surveys and whatnot, but I want to tell you that if you look at these graphs, you're going to learn that uh, the, the one in the, in the red hair is about social isolation. Between 2003 to 2020, the, the curve was a slow rising up. From 2020 to 2023, you're going to find that the curve is a jumping up. If you look here about social engagement, it was very green in 2003, very high. Now going all the way to 2020 and further, it is stiff eh, down. And non-household family social engagement, there is no connection within family. I think even in the church, we felt after the pandemic that people whether they are afraid or they are somehow got used to being isolated, people post-pandemic are not similar to before pandemic. It is becoming the norm that people don't, eh, don't mingle, don't connect, don't interact. Sometimes people come to the church and they leave right after, which is sometimes a good thing. But for you, if you don't find the social interaction in the church, you're going to search for it where? But outside. If you're going to find bonding in the church, you're going to search for it outside. Listen to this. Those who don't have the problem of loneliness, and that's a scientific research, are most likely or more likely to, number one, get married, and the word married here, it means a church's marriage, an organized, uh, ritual, dogmatic, sacramental marriage. Number two, to have a higher income. You can't imagine if you're coming to this uh, emerging adult, searching for job. If you suffer from loneliness, you are expected to make lower a income. Number three, having higher education or educational status. If you feel connected, bonded, accepted, all of these, you are expected to have higher educational status. And this is something that we are as a church so proud of. We know that our children, they love to be educated and they pursue graduate studies and whatnot. But if you suffer from loneliness, that drive deep inside is able, is quenched. Loneliness will actually affect your income. It will affect your relationship. It will affect your educational appetite. Have you ever seen somebody who is lonely? Have you? Why don't you tell me some of the symptoms? If you look at somebody, and you say, this guy is lonely, or this girl is a bit lonely. What would you recognize? What would you see? If you want to just look from the outside appearance, what do you think? 
just raise your hand. She is sad, right? She's not happy. Even if she is in the midst of a, of a group, that's a very important point. What else? Go ahead. Shy to speak, withhold opinion, right? She withhold her opinion. Yes. Whoever doesn't feel lonely, raise your hand and answer my question. What symptoms do you see in somebody who is feeling lonely? Yes, go ahead. Uh, hopeless. hopeless, bravo Aleki. She doesn't feel any hope, right? What else? Go ahead. What about depression? Depression, yes. Not just sad, but depressed. And there is a huge difference. Yes, Habib. Lack of confidence, very low self-esteem. Yes. Slow. Bravo, Alik. What else? Isolated. Bravo, Alik. Withdrawn, right? What else? Mean here, Nakara Faido. All one, yall. Not accepted, right? Bravo, Alik. Yes, Habibi. Anxiety. Do you know, guys, that anxiety? Anxiety and depression are the most yani, strong symptoms associated with loneliness. Every time somebody who is lonely, every time they think about anything, they feel afraid, they feel worried, and so forth. Eighteen, Peter. Pen Peter. Go ahead. Eh? Bravo, Alek. I was waiting for somebody to say that Guys, loneliness could lead to suicidal ideation. Can you imagine that? Because of the lack of hope, depression, sadness, anxiety, not accepted, feeling low, all of that will make somebody to feel veiled. In the book of Psalms, there is a lovely verse that the human soul actually will speak and she would say, why would I be veiled in the midst of your companion. Uh, she feels veiled, yani, yani ashamed, doesn't want to be seen, and she could actually, as a human soul, commit suicide. Yes, Ahabiti. Did you want to say something? Lazy. lazy. Bravo Aleki. Lazy goes in line with slow, because there is lack of excitement. Right? That's a beautiful one. Ay, Habibi. Bravo, Aliki. Sometimes, sometimes, and I love that because this is actually what we call masking. What is masking? What is masking? Bravo, Aliki. What? Is, go ahead. Just putting on a happy face and pretending that. Bravo, Aliki. You know what, guys? Listen to this because this is important. I think we recognize that a lot inside the church sometimes. Listen. What they said is. Actually, the opposite of everything else, which makes everything else is correct as well. But sometimes when loneliness reach a very deep level, the person might put a mask. Put a mask, yani, might be super active. Will go to attend every single meeting. Will volunteer in every single service. Will be in every single liturgy and will put a happy face. But in fact, deep inside, they are shattered, they are lonely, and they are not a happy. This is so dangerous. Uh, symptoms, as Madonna said, uh, feeling anxiousness and restlessness, increased shopping, sometimes a spontaneous spending will be uh, an indication, sometimes substance abuse will be an indication. Drugs. <laughs> okay. Let us take a moment. Sayyidna gave us a wonderful talk about biblical views and spiritual views on loneliness. I want to hear from you just a few examples, whether Sayyidna mentioned or not, about loneliness in the Bible. We said that God said it is not good for Adam to be a 
alone. Sayyidina talked to us about many examples. One of them was, who, who remembers? But I want somebody to tell me an example from Sayyidina's talk. Yes. Joshua. Bravo, Alik. The three young youth? What did you say, Mr. Sam? Mr. Sam, Ruth and Boaz, thank you so much. What else? Daniel in the lion den. Bravo, Alik. What else? The three saintly youth. What else? The disciples after Jesus in the upper room. Bravo, Alik. What make them peaceful? What put peace in their heart is when they, when they saw me in Ba'a, when they saw Christ. What else? Any other examples? No. Noah. Noah. Okay. Yes, Habib, Finda. Go ahead. Mean? Joseph, bravo alaik. Type. Tab, Anna, because Sayyidna covered this area very well and you guys mentioned the examples, I'm not going to go to the examples, but I'm going to take that and apply them in our spiritual life. You know what is the most common confession I always get from an emerging adult? I'm going to mention the sin, and that's why you guys were very calm and quiet all of a sudden. I'm going to also mention names. <laughs> okay. The most common confession that we get from emerging adult is, I keep falling. I fight, but I keep a slide back. And the most common answer I always say, and I'm sure that most of the fathers do that, is, why are you fighting alone? Sometimes we fight sin dependent only on our own power. power. I remember the story of Amba Moses the Black. Amba Moses the Black was fighting a sin and it had made him go to his father of confession 11 times after midnight. 11 times he will go knock the door. The father of confession opened the door. Hey, Moses. I'm still sinning. Okay, Moses, God forgives you. Go back to your cell. Eleven times back and forth. And at the end, his father of confession told him, Moses, why are you just relying on your own power? God is with you. You guys know that only Christ managed to uh, defeat Satan. And only in Christ, we can manage also to overcome temptations. We need to, when we get attacked, we need to pray. When somebody calls me and says, Abuna, I always get that attack and I always fall. I tell him, you know what? When you get the thought, just start praying. Recite some of the Psalms. Why are you fighting alone? Number two, and I think Sayyidina mentioned the story of Elisha and Gehzi when Elisha prayed and asked God to open the eyes for his servant to see that he's not alone. We are not alone in the fight. When we try to learn virtue, sometimes we put effort and this is essential. But virtues are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we need to put the effort in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, and that's very important also, we need to learn the balance in life. Balance in life requires a lot of wisdom, and wisdom cannot be attained away from God. Jesus is the person of wisdom. The Holy Spirit gives wisdom. The Father gives wisdom. You know, one of the stories in the Bible, uh, not in the Bible, actually, in the paradise of monk, one day a monk received a vision, an invitation to go deep in the wilderness to become one of the Anakurites. He went to his father of confession, and father of confession said, but this is not really right. That's not a balanced tone. So the man decided to follow his own thoughts, went to the wilderness, and it was an attack from Satan. The voice of balance 
Through wisdom, we get it number one from the Holy Spirit, from the Bible, and from our spiritual guide, our fathers of confession. They don't hate you. They don't want you to stay low in your spiritual growth, but they want to make sure that you make it a, in wisdom, gradually. Why are you living a spiritual routine alone? Discuss that with your father of confession. And faith struggle in so many ways, and that's another thing. And some of you might be asking why we have Abu Paul talking to us about uh, theology. Well, sometimes in your age group, many thoughts will cross your mind about God's existence, about God's love, about God's mercy, about his judgment. And sometimes if you are left alone yourself, if you live with that thought alone, forgive me to say, some people might end up not believing in God completely. In that struggle, we want you to know that you are not alone. There are answers, there are teachings, there are people who do studies and PhDs. Abu Paul is doing a lot of graduate study in theology and apologetics. So if you are struggling with certain thoughts about God's existence, you are not alone. Ask people who are educated, who are well prepared to answer you. The paradise of monk, one of the saying that I learned when I was young and I still remember, it says those, and I want you guys to look at the animation in the screen, please. Those who have no counselor, they fall as easy as leaves from the tree. One leaf alone falls down. If you are surrounded with the church's fathers, the saints, the Bible, the father of confessions, uh, the servants, your family, you are not alone. And you are not going to fall like that leaves from the tree. Uh, an emotional relationship, and I, I'm sorry to mention that as well. Nowadays, we started to hear a tone of voice of, I want to live alone. I don't want to connect. I don't want to get married. And actually, it is your decision if you want to do that. But I don't want that decision to be just made without uh, rational thinking. Because when God created us, he created us, he human beings, with that longing to connect and bond and create that intimate relationship. From the hand of the church. The Bible said that two are better than one and a three-cord uh, rope will never be, a, be cut off. When the two who feel not alone so that they avoid cuddling and all of this before marriage, they know that Christ in the myth, the relationship will be much closer. The distance will be less. But the moment they start to deviate from Christ, involve a lot of unnecessarily touches before marriage, the distance will be higher and they will be disconnected from God. Abu Nakirul Fakhuri will talk to us about relationship, an intimate relationship, as Sayyidina mentioned. You are not alone. In that relationship, there is Christ in the myth, not to observe what you do and punish you. No, 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 no. He is there to bless that. That's why we allow these things after marriage, after being united in Christ by the Holy Spirit. One of the stories, and that will be almost the conclusion of my talk, I think I still have some time. Uh, feeling lonely could, le could lead to despair and could lead to suicidal ideation. Sayyidina mentioned to us many examples from the Bible. One of them is Elijah. Elijah, after combating the queen and the king and all of that, was at a very low moment. And when God talked to him, God said, why are you here, Elijah? Elijah's reply was a... They killed everyone. 
and I am left alone. I don't want to live anymore. In fact, he was not alone, but he felt lonely. Does anybody remember how many people were still righteous in that time that Elijah didn't see? How many? Minir Faido. Go ahead. Bravo, Marcus. 7,000. Sometimes we are surrounded with the church, a big community, but we feel a, we feel a lonely. In our church, St. Anthony, as I mentioned, started monastic life. Later on came a lovely saint. His name is Amba Bachomius, or Father Bachum. And Father Bachum established what we call the life of fellowship in monasticism, where monks will live together in the same monastery. They will attend tasbiha together. They will eat from the same food. They might sit at the same table. If you go to Ambabshoi Monastery, you're going to find this maquette lovely to remind us of how the monks will be sitting together, eating together from the same meal, interacting together, yet every one of them lives a solitude life. My question to you now after all of this, do you feel lonely sometimes? If you do, you are in the right place. Because our focus, whether psychological, spiritual, relational, emotional, is to make sure that you understand that you are not able, not alone. Uh, loneliness is so dangerous. I'm going to just run quickly on this because I know that it's an intense talk. But I want you to know that people, researchers will say that loneliness is like a lingering canker at the core that eats up the soul. Something that is from inside like a virus or cancer will eat your soul up. Loneliness, and that's one of the research that came up in two months ago, Keda. They say that loneliness, loneliness is equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Loneliness, again, loneliness is equivalent to smoking a day, 15 cigarettes a day. So if you want to break the rule of the convention, <laughs> and smoke without being caught, take a corner and stay in your room, Shwaya, you have 15 cigarettes. <laughs> loneliness will affect your sleeping quality. Loneliness will cause chronic illness. Loneliness will cause depression, as all of you said. It will cause stress, taba'an quality research. But how can I cope with loneliness? Quickly, but very quickly. You need to cope with loneliness on spiritual, Psychological, de developmental, emotional, cognitive, relational, behavioral, and eternal levels. Because if you ignore one of them, you are still a lonely. Coping with loneliness, number one, you need to understand the, the root cause of the problem. And the root cause, I put three words here, I'm not pointing finger to anybody, but... The root cause, ask yourself, is it me? Most probably it will be. Is it they? Maybe. Is it the community? Again, maybe. I want to talk about me because that's what matters today. Ask yourself. Ask yourself. Am I the cause of being lonely? Maybe. I'll give you one tiny example, but maybe if I am somebody who always gossip, people might actually not invite me anymore. If I am somebody who always criticize, who always tell people about their mistakes, about their shortcomings, who always complain, people will not like to talk to me. I'll be alone or lonely. 
So ask yourself about the cause of the problem, be strategic, reach out to trustworthy people and share, reach out your comfort zone slowly, be active and patient, volunteer in the church, celebrate some small success. Sometimes you need to accept the limitations. If you are away to study, you might actually feel some loneliness, but that's because you are away from family. If you belong to military, you might be lonely a little bit. If you are during a pandemic, you might also be lonely. So accept the limitation, aim to healthy interaction. In one word, and that's the, the second last slide. I started by asking you to define loneliness because the moment we define it, the moment we learn how to combat. I hope that the spelling is correct. I did that in the flight coming here. Is that correct? Loneliness is correct like that? I was thinking that over there, upstairs, in the fly, wherever, and I started to think about what is loneliness in a small, short sentence. So I said it is lingering, and I want you to memorize that. Lingering over negative emotions leading into not enjoying self-surrounding. What do you guys think of that? It took me like 15 minutes to come up with a sentence. <laughs> but in fact, it's lingering over negative emotions, leading into a not enjoying your self-surroundings. That's what loneliness is. Whether that surrounding is convention, church, school, anywhere. If you keep lingering over the negative emotions, you're going to hate yourself. People will hate you and you will remain eh, lonely. This guy is sitting in a lovely scenery, but beside him an empty spot. This girl is also sitting in a lovely scenery, but beside her is an empty spot. As an organizer, I want these empty spots to remain like that. But as an advisor, we need to change something. These two individuals, giving their backs to one another. So let us change the situation and let us bring them, change the places so that they can talk to one another. It's all about change your attitude. And the convention here doesn't hurt when you see somebody to raise your hand and say hi. In conclusion, it is a decision that you need to make. Nobody will make that for you. There is a friend, and that's a lovely verse also I want you to memorize. There is a friend who is much closer than a brother. That friend is God himself. There are clouds of saints ready to support you. There are wonderful fathers, bishop, and priests waiting to chat with you, help you, support you. There is an amazing church with wonderful community that deserves you. Don't need to feel lonely or even alone. Now I will count to three, and I want you to all to shout loud, say, hey, but, uh, no longer alone, but after I count to three. Okay? You're going to shout and say, Eva, no longer alone. Okay. One. Two. La, la, la. But what's the bit? Okay. One, two, three. No longer alone. Thank you so much and God bless you.